I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, come and tell on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Plumbing on your saltwater tank is mainly there to get water from the tank down into the sump and from the sump back up into your tank. And the first thing that water hits on the way back up into the tank is the first thing that I start with on plumbing designs, the return pump. A return pump is a pump whose job is to push water back into your display tank. Now I can pull that water from a sump, like in our Mega Matrix 120 build, or in a case of an all-in-one tank, it's pulling water from the back chamber and putting it back into the front of the tank. Now if you have an all-in-one tank, then the manufacturer has already chosen the return pump, so you get what you get. Now if you have to choose your own return pump, the first decision to make is one about head pressure. Head pressure is how much effort your return pump has to overcome to get water back into your tank. Part of that effort has to do with gravity, and part of it has to do with your plumbing design. The gravity part of the head pressure calculation is a simple measurement of the vertical distance between your return pump and the output nozzle on your return line. On the Mega Matrix 120, that's about five feet. We'll write that number down for future reference. Now your plumbing design enters into the head pressure calculation. Every time water has to go through a bend, fitting, pipe, or tubing, there's more effort required to get that water back into your tank. For example, a good rule of thumb is that a 90 degree elbow adds one foot of head pressure and a 45 degree elbow adds half a foot of head pressure. Reduction in the size of pipe or tubing also adds some head pressure, and for ease of understanding, I'm gonna ignore reductions in tubing of pipe size for now. On our Mega Matrix 120, say we use three 90 degree elbows in our return line plumbing design. So three times one equals three, so we'll add three feet to our head pressure calculation. That brings our total head pressure to eight feet. This is the number your return pump has to overcome to get water back into your tank. If you choose a return pump whose head pressure is equal to the result of your head pressure calculation, all that's gonna happen is water's gonna dribble out of your return line. Therefore, you wanna choose a return pump whose maximum head pressure is higher than the result of your head pressure calculation. Now back in the day, you had to take a best guesstimate. You had to choose a pump, put it on your tank, and if you had too much float, you either had to exchange it or add a ball valve to your plumbing design to throttle back. With the advent of controllable DC pumps, that's all gone. All you have to do now is choose a return pump and then change the flow on a controller or an app. For example, on the Mega Matrix 120, we're using the Cichet Synchra SDC 7.0 pump. Maximum head pressure on this bad boy is 16 and a half feet. That's more than I need, but in my case, I'm gonna dial it back by simply turning the dial on a controller or opening my smartphone and using the app. That's much easier than exchanging it or adding complications to my plumbing design. Now that you know your tank's head pressure and you're ready to choose a return pump, the next question is internal or external pump. External pumps sit outside your sump and used to be big and bulky and therefore took up a lot of space. They were usually louder and it wasn't uncommon for the seals on them to go out and to need replacing. Now before you write off external return pumps, they do have some positive features, such as not putting in a lot of heat into your tank. They also used to be the only pump that you could use in high pressure situations, such as when your sump was in a basement or far away from your tank. With the advent of more powerful internal return pumps, such as a Red Dragon and Abyss pumps, you can now get powerful internal DC pumps that have high head pressure ratings. Internal return pumps sit inside your sump like we're doing on the Mega Matrix 120. This is nice as they take up less space, you don't have seals to worry about, and they're easy to plumb into your system. The new DC pumps also add little heat to your tank. When I'm designing systems for VIP clients, I try to use an internal return pump whenever I can. They're easy to work with, cause less headaches long term, and look cleaner in my opinion. Once you've chosen a return pump whose maximum head pressure is greater than the head pressure on your tank, the next step is to match the output size on the return pump to the return line size on your tank. On the Mega Matrix 120, it comes with three quarter inch return lines, and the Cichet Synchro SDC 7.0 comes with one inch and three quarter inch output bushings. So in this case, I'm gonna simply discard the one inch bushing and use the three quarter inch bushing. This way the output size on the return pump matches the output size on my tank and I can reduce head pressure. For example, using a return pump that had a one and a half inch output nozzle while the tank has a three quarter inch return line, not so bueno. It can work, but it's not ideal as there's a large reduction in size between the two. You want the two sizes to match or to be close to one another. I always use a quality brand and I encourage clients to have a backup pump on hand. Even if you don't want to have an exact match of your return pump, you can buy a powerful enough pump to overcome the head pressure on your system and use it for a backup. For example, using an AC return pump to act as a spare for your DC pump. Pro tip, your replacement return pump can be made to directly replace your existing return pump or you can simply buy enough soft tubing to reach between the pump and your tank. 
All you gotta do is place a temporary pump in your sump, run the tubing into your tank, clamp it off, and turn on the pump. Quick and simple temporary return pump fix. Choosing a return pump from your tank requires a little bit of math and a big commitment to quality. And once water leaves the return pump, it's gonna get back into your tank through your return lines. Those return lines can be soft or hard, and in the next episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about soft plumbing design. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.